at Isaiah chapter number 11, it says, The wolf shall lie down with the lamb. Now, I got an email today, and I'm getting them every day practically from people who are greatly upset by the Mandela effect. And they're buying into this stuff. And the email I got today says that the King James Bible is the one they changed. Not the New King James, not the NIV and the rest of them, but the King James Bible has been changed. Now, folks, don't let them flim-flam you and blow you away. Consider tonight. If they can change the Bible, if they can change God's holy word, then it is no longer settled in heaven. And no longer will one jot or one tittle pass for all be fulfilled. The word of God is finished, folks. Amen. Settled and sealed. So the Mandela effect is a psyops to cause you to doubt your Bible. And the reason I mention this scroll of Isaiah, not a one of them have ever mentioned it. All of these people are talking about New Testament scriptures that have been changed. They won't deal with the issue of Isaiah chapter number 11 in a text that is 2,300 years old that was not changed. It's just like your King James Bible. The change is in their head. You can put thoughts into people's minds and they'll accept it. That tells me that he's getting people ready. The Antichrist is getting them ready. Because if you ever give up your faith in the Word of God, you're finished. That's what's wrong with our churches now. That's why the churches in this country, I, I hate to say this tonight, but I have to confess the truth. I have nothing but contempt for most of, most of them. I do. I have, I have utter contempt for most of the churches in this country. And the reason I do is because they won't say a thing about what's destroying this nation. And they're throwing their kids to the wolves. It's sad. The place that ought to be the light, the place that ought to be the salt of the earth. My goodness gracious, folks. These people aren't your brothers and sisters. This is sick. And they don't seem to be bothered a bit. It doesn't seem to bother them. You know what that tells me? As it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. The days of Noah were characterized by this. Now here's the way it was in the days of Noah. The flood came and took them all away, and the Bible says they knew not until the flood came and took them away. And the Democrats are having their convention right now. And of course, they're countering Donald Trump. They're throwing, they're throwing everything they can at Donald Trump. And they're saying this is the greatest nation on earth. We don't need to be made great again. We're great now. And the eyes of a progressive liberal, I suppose it is what they want. But it's sure not what I want. And it's not what I grew up in. No, sir. How long will it be before what goes on in Canada where you can have sex with your dog comes into America? And that's a fact. How long will it be? Will America still be great? Is America great tonight? No, it's not, folks. No, it's not. Don't kid yourself. Don't kid yourself. I wouldn't waste my time listening to a politician. Do you know how much time I've spent listening to the Democrat National Convention? About 30 seconds. The only thing I know about them is the few sound bites I happen to, I happen to force myself to listen to. <laughs> I couldn't care less. It's a cesspool of filth. And the Republicans aren't much better. And the only hope for this nation is a hope that... Uh, that hope that Trump will turn out right, and I don't know that he will. But he's certainly better than a rattlesnake. It's called pragmatism. Pragmatism is this. Pragmatism deals with the reality that you're living in right now and says, I may not like what's going on right now, but I've got to deal with what's going on right now and make the best of what's happening right now and hope for better. And so pragmatism applied to our, to our uh, uh, politicians running for office says, we know what Hillary Clinton is. She's already said she's going to take your guns away from you. If she goes in as president, I don't want to hear any of these guys whining about losing their guns. They deserve it. They do. They deserve it. 
I, I, I don't hear him whining. But she's already said that she's going to, and she's going to raise your taxes out of the ceiling. And she is going to push this liberal, one-world, globalist agenda right down your throat. She'll probably be worse than Barack Obama, if that's possible. That's what's coming if you put Hillary Clinton in office. Now tell me something. How can you read your Bible and pray and get on your face and call out to God and ask God to save people and then go out and vote like that? That's why I'm full of contempt. I'm angry. I'm sick to death of these people. I've been at this a long time. And I'm sick to death of the Christian religion in America. It's an abomination. Good night. We leave out our subdivision coming to church tonight. And people parked on both sides of the road in our subdivision where we live. And I know why they're there. They're going to prayer meeting tonight. But they're going to a house. So many people have given up on the churches. They don't go anymore. And the truth of the matter is, I would be hard pressed to tell them. Uh, it, a lot of places, where they ask me, preacher, where can I go to church? I don't have a clue. I don't live there. I don't know. We got people sitting around. This man that just got up here tonight, Keith Tickell. These people came from Beaumont, Texas. Y'all didn't come here to get rich, did you? <laughs> I know you did. <laughs> you didn't come to get rich. You came because you hungered for the word of God. But we got people sitting right over here, right across the street. They won't, cross, they won't walk across the street to come to the house of God and hear the truth. There's a couple sitting right here. They came from Arizona. Angelo and Kathleen uh, Kukendall, Kukendall, what? Kikendall, all right, Kikendall, Kikendall. They came from Arizona. That's a long way, folks. Did y'all come over here to get rich? <laughs> came, I know you did. Came for the word of God, didn't you? Y'all from New York? New York City or state? Long Island, on the city. Were you here Sunday? I remember Long Island. Okay, you were here Sunday. Amen. That's Trump country up there. <laughs> you all probably know him a whole lot better than I do. I'm hoping he'll work out if, we can, if, if he gets in there. New York. Amen. How many people up there? 15 million? 20 million? 20 in the metro area. 20 million in the metro area. Do you know how many people live in the state of Tennessee? The whole state from coast to coast? Part? I was getting ready to say six million. Six and a half million. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago. It was only five something. Six and a half million people live in this whole state. And it's over 400 miles from the Mississippi River to Johnson City. All right? Six and a half million. And you live up there with 20 million people concentrated in that area around New York, Manhattan, Queens, Long Island. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You take Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, Tennessee, and I don't know how you'd have to figure them out. Probably that many. Probably four states would, would, would e equal your 20 million people of New York. I know it. And do you all, is there, do you all have a church up there? Still looking. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, this is not a rarity, folks. It's not rare anymore. 50, 60 years ago, it would have been a different situation, but not now. People are calling us and writing this church all the time, and they're saying, please, we can't come there right now. Is there somewhere we can go where we live? Do you know somebody out here you can recommend? Uh, for us to uh, for us to go to church and I'm hard-pressed. I can't I can't recommend them because I don't know We got some people down in Hawaii Hawaii out there in the middle of the Pacific Ocean who support this ministry all the time 
And they, you know, they're hard pressed. He writes me and he says, the man in Hawaii, he writes me and he says, this, this place is nothing but a new age prosperity crowd down here in Hawaii. New age prosperity. And I get that everywhere. God's given us something good here at Temple. He really has. He's given us something good. And I thank God for it tonight. I thank God for the fact that you support the work. Because you, you, could, you, could, uh, you could turn and say, no, I'm not going to support the work anymore. You know, I'm done with it. How many's ever heard of the Moab?